Daniel Larson, a homeless man who roams the streets of Denver, Colorado. He believes that he is destined to marry America's God Talent winner Grace Vanderwall. He believes he is a famous singer. In reality, it is all a lie. Cleverly set up by trolls, Daniel lives each day believing that he is famous and inches away from meeting Grace. Welcome to Daniel's Denial, a documentary series covering the life and times of Daniel Larson. We left off last episode with Daniel getting mobbed. Reality was that he was pushing through a crowd of people with a few recognizing him. His delusions made him believe that he was the reason for the crowd and it only helped to further his belief that he is some kind of a celebrity. Well, Daniel is kind of a celebrity, but not for the reason he expects, nor is he the kind of celebrity he thinks he is. At this point, he has gained a significant following and is what's known as an internet micro-celebrity or a personality who has a decent following on social media. Last episode ended in May of 2022. Get ready for a wild ride, because things only get crazier as Mr. President becomes more and more delusional by the day. Daniel met fellow TikToker Brink in May, in a now enlisted vlog called I Met Daniel Larson, Brink and his friend are seen riding electric scooters and trying to track down Daniel. They find him next to a building and begin to interact with him. The same day the mobbing incident occurred, Daniel and Brink hung out, with Brink buying Daniel food and posting videos of things they did together on TikTok. His intentions are unknown, whether they be from a genuine place or from a desire to gain clout. During Daniel's first homeless arc, which began in April of 2022, he faced a lot of issues and challenges being homeless. However, despite all of this, Daniel's second professionally recorded song, Something More, was released on July 1st. The song was funded by Bob, like all the others. The song was recorded and mixed in a fully equipped recording studio. Here's a small snippet from the song. The way you laugh, the way you scream, you held how to feel and am I afraid I need to break free is there something more out there waiting for me Daniel then posted to discord that he left a message to Bob about his finances and potentially getting an apartment by the end of July in order to do this Daniel would allegedly have to fire Andrew because of his inability to make more than a $50 transaction later the discord incident happened the day before, Daniel hosted a Q&A on the r slash Daniel Larson 2 Discord server. He received donations and answered people's questions. It was a relatively harmless event. On July 1st, things took a turn for the worst. Daniel posted to the server frequently. Not liking some of the people on the server for whatever reason, Daniel asked the admin of the server to ban people for him since he didn't have permission to do so. Wanting more control, Daniel left and joined another server run by a user named Fring. It is unknown who ran this account or who was responsible for creating the server. The new server was advertised on TikTok by Daniel and soon enough the server filled up with Larsonians. The people in the server started bombarding Daniel in an attempt to get him to join other servers. Confusion erupted and soon enough Daniel was given full permission on the Fring server. As soon as he got said perms he started banning people. He was soon enough convinced to leave the Fring server and go back to the r slash Daniel Larson 2 server which he was given full permission for. He soon left. On July 2nd, Daniel posted a series of TikToks showing how disappointed in everyone he was. The next day was relatively uneventful with Daniel asking YouTuber Papa Gut to react to his new song and making a new enemy that day. Kanye556 is an acquaintance of Daniel's who has collaborated with him on his musical efforts. The earliest known reference to Kanye was on a server known as Larson Library, which is now inactive. On July 2nd, he supposedly leaked Daniel's number. Because of this, Daniel declared war on Kanye in a similar manner to the way he did to Flexburger. He would later release a diss track for Kanye 556 known as Sunshine. Kanye 556 and Daniel appear to still be collaborating as of the making of this video, with a channel called Daniel underscore Larson posting these collaborations. 
this account is not controlled by Daniel. I mentioned a YouTuber named Papa Gut earlier. Now seems like the perfect time to discuss him a little further, as he'll be mentioned in the story from here on out. Papa Gut is a commentary YouTuber who was a part of the predator catching community and a controversial person in the Daniel Larson community. His involvement in the community began in May of 2021 when he posted his first video on Daniel. Daniel knows about Papa Gut and has spammed his comment section on multiple occasions. Papa Gut's Daniel content usually consists of updates on his situation. However, he isn't the best source of information, notably because of his bias towards Daniel. Gut claims that the community isn't aware of mental illness the way he is and uses that as a defense for Daniel's actions. Papa Gut has also enabled Daniel in the past. Back to the story, Daniel faked a coma on July 2nd. The incident started with Daniel posting a video allegedly having just woken up from a coma that lasted an hour that was allegedly caused by heat stroke. The coma was either a fake incident in order to get attention, or the other theory, which is that Daniel didn't know what a coma was and passed out for some reason and labeled it as such. On the 4th, Daniel claims his coma was not a stunt. Things were uneventful until the 6th. One of Reddit user named MonkeyMan56783 interviewed Daniel. MonkeyMan was a minor at the time and didn't know about Daniel's allegations and definitely shouldn't have been around him. He was accompanied by his grandpa, and the interview appears to have taken place at an outdoor picnic or restaurant table. The interview went smoothly, with both parties appearing to be engaged. Daniel's delusions kicked in during this interview, and when asked about how many people listen to his music, responded with 10 to 15% of the world's population. That is a large number that is far from the truth. To protect Monkey Man's identity, I will summarize the entire interview rather than play the clips. The first question is, how long does it take to make your music? Daniel responds with three to four full days. Why are your songs so spread out? Daniel cites money as the reason for this, as each song is around three or four thousand dollars to produce. When is your next song coming out? Before December of 2022. Who funds your music if you've only made four hundred dollars? Bob Proctor is responsible for the funding of Daniel's music. Who is your team, and who is your producer? Daniel produced the entirety of Roaring Thunder by himself. We can really start to see Daniel's delusions kick in around this part of the interview when Monkey Man asks, quote-unquote, how many fans do you have as an estimation and where are they from, end quote. Daniel claims that 10 to 15 percent of the world population, which is around 800 million to 1.2 billion people, who are mostly from TikTok, listen to his music. Now, if that's not far-fetched, I do not know what is. The next day after the interview, Daniel fired Andrew. Daniel also took a much-needed shower. On the 9th, he hosted a Twitch stream that got him enough money to get a hotel room. His Twitch was managed by a new manager named Oxus. He is yet another controversial figure in the community as he seems to target other disabled content creators such as World of T-Shirts. Due to this, the community found it hard to pinpoint Oxus's true intentions whether they be out of genuine care for Daniel or wanting to cash out on his popularity. Oxus's real name is Ivan. His early life is pretty vague, but there are a few bits of information on him. He grew up in Michigan, and after he graduated, he moved out to Los Angeles to pursue an acting career. Ox was cast in a movie called Hell Trip in 2018. Afterwards, he would then foray into the world of social media. During this period, he was known as Ox the Goat on TikTok, posting van life videos. His following grew significantly when he started doing content relating to AIOPMs or disabled lolcows. His main targets were Daniel Larson and World of T-Shirts, also known as Joshua Block. He became Daniel's new manager in summer of 2022. Ox tried to help Daniel by paying for his expenses in motel rooms, paying for food, and attempting to get him institutionalized, which he failed at. Ox's monetization of Daniel was heavily criticized, and he would respond to this by claiming that it was all an attempt to pay for Daniel's expenses and to help him. He will become very important later, so keep all of this in mind. Nothing of interest happens for the time being other than Daniel going live with Brink a few times and Twitch streaming. Daniel got housing in a place known as the Pink Room on July 20th, ending the first homeless arc and starting the Pink Room arc. He also bought a $400 pair of headphones with the money supplied by his streams. On the 21st, a vile incident would come to light known as the Toothbrush Incident. 
This happened as Flexburger manipulated Daniel into committing the acts in the clip. The video starts with Daniel telling Grace the video was for her and that it was quote-unquote special. He then got into position and inserted the toothbrush into a certain orifice of his body. Daniel removes the toothbrush, settles into a different pose, and proceeds to brush his teeth with said brush. This kicked off the pink remark with a bang. Sometime later, the pencil incident would occur. The incident in question involved Daniel inserting a pencil into the same orifice of his body mentioned previously and jumping around with it still in place. Daniel's stay at the pink room would be short-lived, however, as he would destroy the walls. In a video uploaded to TikTok, he shows his destroyed room and all of the holes he made in the wall. This event was likely what got him kicked out of wherever he was staying. Here is Daniel's video of the incident. <laughs> <laughs> On the 23rd, Daniel went to Hooters with Brink and also destroyed his newly bought headphones. This event started a period known as the July 2022 Electronics Destruction Spree. This was a period where Daniel destroyed said headphones, a tablet, a TV, at an Airbnb he was staying at, and damaged his phone. On July 27th, Daniel was officially homeless, starting yet another homeless arc. Due to not having a valid Colorado ID, Daniel wasn't able to get a hotel room without Brink helping get him in using his. On August 1st, Daniel got one step closer to getting identification, having gathered all the necessary documents. The next day, the infamous nuke prank occurred. Ox and Daniel were streaming on Twitch. Ox had set up a donation goal which upon being fulfilled would result in a prank being played on Daniel in which he showed a fake nuclear attack warning to him. Daniel, being stressed about US and China tensions and extremely gullible, fell for it. He got a pad of paper and began writing notes, and would soon run to warn the front desk about their impending doom. When Daniel got back from the front desk, he was informed by Ox about the warning being a prank. This led to Daniel firing Ox and declaring war on him. Understandably so, Daniel was very angry about this. Hello everyone. This is Daniel Larson. What Ox, my manager, just did is not okay. And you have every single right to be pissed. He took a political video and turned it into a massive fucking chaos. He turned everything into a situation that he knew was going to escalate. He knew was going to become a bigger issue. He knew that it was going to piss me off. And for him to take a political video that involves China and yet do that? What is in that fucking guy's mind? He's fired for a week. On suspension. Ox, I'll see you next Monday. Goodbye. Ox is fired. And what he did tonight, taking a political situation into a national bomb threat, has completely crossed the line. I don't give a f Sorry to my entire fan base. And the entire nation. There is no bomb threat. What Ox did tonight is absurd. And you, I want all my fans to give him the most hate he's ever got because of what he just said. He literally scared people just now. So fuck Ox. The fake nuke prank damaged Daniel and Ox's relationship beyond repair. As you can imagine, August hasn't been a great month for Daniel and things would only get worse after someone from the real Vanderwall team, not trolls, got in contact with him. Tina Vanderwall is Grace's mother and all mothers have an instinct to protect their children. When she caught wind of Daniel's obsession of her daughter, she was naturally horrified. 
On the 14th, Tina left a comment on Daniel's YouTube channel. The comment reads as follows. God, Daniel, do you think I'm watching your lives? Whoever just contacted you claiming to be me was not me. I, I have no idea who Ox even is. I, I, I don't want you to talk about Grace or our family anymore. I have only replied to you once when you DM'd me a couple of weeks ago that I told you to stop saying Grace's name, but clearly you refuse to listen. Stop all of this. Everyone communicating with you are trolls trying to get you to do crazy things. Please stop. This comment did little to dissuade Daniel from obsessing. He left a load of replies under the comment. Tina would only respond to one of these replies, which was, Okay, I understand. I have an important question for you if you don't mind. Her reply goes as follows. I do mind. Stop everything to do with our family, especially my daughter. You are making me reply publicly so you can't censor what I'm actually saying to you. I've spoken to DDRC as well as the Denver Police and Denver FBI. Do you really want to continue this? Again, just stop. Your reality is not real. Daniel responded with, I understand. I, I just want to say that I'm sorry and I can explain everything and help. Everything got messed up because of my past friendships. I'm sorry, misunderstood. I fucked up. And I want to help in any way to show you who I really am. I really do have your entire family and your daughter in best interest. It hurts me too to see this like this. I really care, and I am a fighter. With no support, I got confused. Tina mentioned that she had messaged Daniel to stop talking about Grace on 25th of July, 2022. Her messages went as followed. Stop saying my daughter's name. Stop saying you're in a relationship with her. You are scaring her and her family. Everything you have said and done has been in your own mind. You need to access some mental health support and stop harassing my daughter. I have contacted the authorities and will continue to press the issue if you don't stop making these disturbing videos. Your followers have harassed my daughter long enough. STOP! In all caps. She messaged this to Daniel as he had spammed her DM. Daniel replied with, I understand. I'm ending my life tonight. Everyone has messed up everything. I understand what you and your family cuts off there. Daniel made the comment about ending himself to manipulate Tina into responding and never followed through with it. Daniel's delusional behavior only would ramp up after this comment and it is obvious he didn't heed Tina's warnings. Nothing of note happened for the rest of August, except for Daniel claiming to have received housing. He lived with a woman known as Miss P. September had Daniel talking about his finances and politics, notably his calls for world peace, which were honestly strange coming from him out of all people. Other than that, the month had no major events worth discussing. Daniel was removed from his housing with Miss P for a massive meltdown that got him kicked out. Police showed up and had to escort Daniel away from the building, marking another homeless arc. Here is the meltdown. It's for my safety, because because you guys, you guys want to kick me out on the street! Nobody wants to kill you out! If she wanted to kick you out, she would have been put in a 30-day notice for you. I'm pretty sure. Robert, today, Robert that said that you, you broke the window. Miss P has been dealing with you. Robert's not trying to kick you out. You know? I don't think it's I, I have his number. Okay, but Robert's not trying to kick you out. Like, you don't have to record everything. Like, I am required to for my company and for my protection. Hey, hey, you can't do that. Man. You can't bust on... Listen, so you know all hold, hold on, hold on, listen to me. Hold on, listen to me. You said, listen to me. You terrifying him? Listen to me. Stop interrupting me. Listen to me. You straight up, listen to me. You straight up. You straight up, you straight up, listen to me. You, listen to me. You need to listen to me rather than interrupt my goddamn shit. No, because what you're doing right now is just, hey, You, you straight up, you, listen to me. No. You guys are not cooperating oh, at all. Cooperating. You're not cooperating. <laughs> you guys are not doing anything right. You guys are supposed to call my entertainment manager for security reasons. So you <sighs> and you guys want to blame me for everything. And
It's not my fault! We just blame you for the holes you put in the wall. No, it's... The reason why that's happening is because you guys are, like, blaming me for all my fucking career! Oh, do you see your head? You guys want to blame me for just the fact that I am popular! You guys don't listen to me! You guys don't listen to me at all! <laughs> you guys straight up don't listen to me! Yeah, we love you, bro. But you guys don't listen to me! You guys call the police instead! Because I I I I've been working on my stuff. It's clearly that I'm angry now because you guys just don't do anything. I've been working on myself. You guys don't care. I've been working on my, myself. <sighs> I'm listening. I'm listening to you. You, know? you guys don't help at all. <laughs> I've even had meetings with my case manager about this. You guys don't handle this right. You guys are supposed to call my entertainment manager if people are coming on the front porch de bringing deliveries. There's no more deliveries coming here. Because then why the fuck did you guys show up on a weekend? Because I live down the street and I'm a staff and I'm obligated to come to any house home that I want. Then you guys are supposed to I call. I announce myself to you that I'm coming before I come. Because what happens if I'm not here? I'm not coming here for you. And then you guys got and you guys got angry because I'm recording when I told you guys I that I hold on, don't interrupt me, don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt me. I'm I apologize. Don't interrupt me. No one's angry because you're recording. That is your legal right. That exactly and then she told me I could do it outside of this house. Yeah, but because you can't record but us, and you're recording I, can, I, I can record you for my yeah. legal, you just said, legal right. Your legal right, but your legal right is canceled once you start recording us. That's, That's no. Contract. You're not supposed to do that. Well, you know I what, record, I'm not on a contract. I can't you. There is no contract, because so I never signed a contract. I have never signed a contract. It was a, a waiver, actually, for you to be here, you know. Concerned to me. What's your number? Can I, can I call you personally to talk to you? No, me? you can't. Because I don't know who you are. You have not told me. What? What do you mean? I told them the stuff. Well, I mean, other than... I've met you before. You put me in your tick tickety talks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not my case manager. I'm so, not, so you guys, you guys did not call her. But you're in my house, though. You're one of my homes. You did, you did, not, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, you did not, right now you're not you're hold not, on, you're listen, not leaving a safe environment for my staff, so I'm concerned for her. You, you did not, you did not call Reva, okay, you did not call Reva, they're just not listening, they're not listening at all. They're refusing to even listen to me. They keep interrupting me. And they're going off over what happened last night. And we've already been over this hundreds of times. And now they're calling the police. Yeah. We're calling EMS services for your head to make sure you're okay. So you put your head through the wall multiple times. But you, you just don't like. You guys are supposed to call Reva, and then Reva is supposed to talk with my Reva entertainment is manager. Today's Reva is like Chick Fil A. No, no I, I listen to me. I know that, but there's there's already a set rule in place. And that rule is not being followed. So when you start damaging things, we're supposed to follow certain rules. No, I never said that. I'm talking about the reason why you guys came. Because you guys came for what happened last night. No, we didn't. Because 
You, you guys never even told me why you guys were here. You guys just came in, we're sat down next to me. To tell you why we're here. I, I you're not obligated. You, wait a minute. You're not I obligated. The that runs the house to the staff, is Miss P. Miss P. Miss P. Doesn't her. even. Miss P. Doesn't even help. She doesn't. She, it's not her job. So my understanding is you're upset because we're here for last because because you guys came into the house, you guys tried to talk to me, and when I tried to explain, you guys wouldn't listen. It's it's very clear that you guys just want me out. We love you, guys. We will never let you out until you start down With you guys calling the police, it like I said, it's clear that you guys want me out. And now you guys are trying to cover it up. Saying that you guys are not calling the police when you guys already did. You guys are just trying to cover up everything. Trying to make me look like a fucking idiot. I'm not going to be calm because, like, literally, this needs to get heard and this needs to come to an end. Because, like, the, I have already told you the fact that when I am, I'm so popular with my entertainment career, okay, that when, and my music career, that when I go out in goddamn public, okay, I can't even leave the house without, like, people walking up to me. That's happened every single day this week. And Reva, my case manager, knows. And we've been through this before at our team meetings that Reva said that she doesn't want to be involved with my entertainment team. Now, there is no security measures no safety plans put into place for when I'm in public. Okay? My location is getting breached 24-7 when I'm out in public. My mentor, Bob, has now came forward, and he has even said he doesn't want to even be involved in public with me anymore. Because, it, like, there is no plan for safety. So, Reva has... Now, I've told Reva on Friday that she needs to contact my entertainment manager rather than calling the police for everything because it's not helping. You were going to stop by that explorer right there. You're getting new charges for this day. Okay. okay, so I have an update. So I am now kicked back out living on the street again. Um, the uh, police officer that showed up that the S.H.I.E.L.D. Foundation called is the same police officer that has written all of my other charges against me. They have now wrote another one for $1,000 estimatedly they do not know but is what they said they do not know but they estimated it at a thousand dollars um they refused to talk to my case manager reva and they called me a liar about my entire management and how we're trying to get all this you know sorted out we need people to all be on the same page they have completely called me a liar 
um, the situation blew up out of control. And now, because of the people showing up on property, phone numbers being leaked, the provider, Miss P, has now came out and told the police that she is in fear for her life and is in fear of my popularity. And she has now come forward and said that. And so the police did write me a citation for a $1,000. And um, they, they refused to talk to my case manager, Reva. It's a massive mess. And um, I tried to explain that I have a, you know, team that is supposed to be managing popularity concerns and the um, officer basically tried to, the police officer tried to tell me to shut up and how it's their job. Like how my my management does not overrule them. Um, they were basically trying to interrogate me and um, they were coming in real hard and real strong. Um, Reva is still not aware of this entire situation, so she's going to have her hands full with tons of paperwork when Monday comes around. And at this point, I think it's easy enough to say that the 16-day notice is going to be guaranteed. Um, I don't know what to really say, I don't know what to really do, because I am flat out being silenced. And it's just becoming so ugly that, like, um, it, they're basically calling me a liar, even though I'm right. Also, um, one more thing, the police officer from earlier today completely refused to even have, like, even try to call or even, um try to talk to my case manager or even like I tried to tell them that like they need to when it comes down to like safety concern in public or people showing up on property they need to communicate it with um, LBI which is my supposed to be my um, legal and security team but they're calling me a liar. Um, Shield is. Um, and the police. So literally it didn't even matter. Like, it's clear that they don't care about my life or my career. They're just always calling me a liar. And that's like the way I see it. As far as how everything escalated, I literally am in fear for my life as well. I'm in fear for my career. I'm in fear of my future. And if people are going to try to escalate situations like that, I'm not going to be involved. Okay, another update. This is actually crazy. So since the police wrote me a citation for a thousand dollars and I have to go back to court in a month on the 18th, November 18th, it just dawned on me that um, I might actually not be allowed back at the house completely um, because if I have a citation and I have court, do they have a restraining order on me and that house? It just dawned on me. Um, and so now I'm afraid to go back to the house because I told them that I was going to be out all day long because they were like, what are you going to do as far as like de-escalating this? I said, I don't even want to be at the house. I want to be out all day long. I'll come back tonight. And it just dawned on me that they went ahead with the citation. Which, if that's the case, then it just dawns on me that, like, am I allowed to go back home at all? Or am I going to have to get a hold of my case manager? Well, with it being a Sunday, there's no way at all that I can get in contact with my case manager. I will have to be forced to wait till tomorrow. And it, that just dawned on me. 
Um, also, what also dawned on me is how, since I was recording for court evidence and for my safety and just, you know, like, just everything in general. And I keep getting spam called. My number is clearly being leaked on the internet, which is a bunch of gibberish. It's so stupid, but it's clearly being leaked. This is... Hold on here, guys. I'm going to have to shut off my all of my sound. I hope you guys can hear me. But it's um, also clear that um, all the information that the police officers were asking me, well, on video, literally leaked all of my identity. My social security number, which they asked for, I'm not sure if that's on video, but my birth date, my name, first and last name, and definitely my address is also leaked. And it just dawned on me that all of that is now leaked on the internet. So, thanks a lot, um, police officers that showed up, because that is ridiculous. So, I just also got off the phone with Bob and, um, my mentor, and he is stating that, like, he just can't be involved anymore. So, now my music is once again put on hold because... He doesn't like, he doesn't want to put more money down. Um, he, he's also saying that like the security is something that we're going to need, but with no one cooperating, he is like on my side of things. He doesn't know what to do. Okay, and then also I keep getting spam calls. Um, even though I blocked the number, they're making new numbers. And it's all day long, it doesn't stop, it's like literally just all day long, all night long. And it seems to be like phone numbers that are coming up with the location of Portland, Maine. So Maine, uh, USA. And it is, um, they keep claiming to be the IRAA, which is like imprisonment free there we go again they called again even though i just blocked their other number right before i made this video less than 45 seconds ago and they're calling already again they are claiming to be the iraa which is like if you're imprisoned so that means if you're in prison and you make a lot of money or you're required to get a certain amount of money, then the IRAA can reach out to you. Um, but it's weird that this is the IRAA. Yeah, this is the IRAA. We need a response now or we will be forced to arrest you. Um, and I looked it up and it's like criminal something. And then it's like if you're incar wrongfully incarcerated, you get free money. Which is like weird, because they, okay, yeah, they're spamming the hell out of me, holy shit. So yeah, um, there's, this is just flat out ridiculous. Everyone on my fucking management is going to be fired if this can't work. Also, I do admit that I should not have escalated everything by screaming and yelling, but... You know, I'm also at the same time not going to have people call around, right, and just act like I am nothing. If people are go going to say that there's an issue or something, they need to talk it over with my entire disability management, including LBI Entertainment, which is their job to handle, you know, like security issues as far as people showing up on property. If they're gonna come, if Shield Foundation is going to come over to my house, right, and just harass the hell out of me, like I have on video, to where it's like, this is, where I say this is how this needs to be done, and they're not cooperating, they're not listening to me, 
and they try to fight with me, it's just flat out ridiculous. Um, I have evidence. I've sent it over to Reva before. And my case manager, Reva, has straight up told me that they can't be doing it like this. This is not how the services are supposed to be run. And it's fucking everything up. Now, um, of course, with it being a Sunday, there is no plan moving forward. The Shield Foundation, like I said, it's clear. They don't want me at the house. Um, why is it, why does it seem like all my friends, everything that I try to make, and just everything that I try to do right gets fucking screwed up? It's ridiculous. Okay, so, I have some breaking news. I just called my care provider, Miss P, to see about how I can get home, um, since I'm going to need a ride, and if I can go home. She told me to call Robert, so I called Robert, who works for Shield Foundation, who is, um, Mrs. P's manager, and I get a phone call from Aaliyah. Um, who is working the front desk, apparently, at S.H.I.E.L.D. And Aaliyah, who is working the front desk at S.H.I.E.L.D., told me that I am not welcome to go home, and what I need to do is I need to go to the mental hospital, because my company is fraud, and I am highly mental disability whatever. Like, they're not believing me. Okay, so apparently Aaliyah at the Shield Foundation is telling me to go all the way up to the North Glen Hospital, which is like all the way up north and like outside of Denver. <laughs> Aaliyah at Shield just fucking cussed me out and called me names and literally just party on the phone letting me just scream at her. He's a bitch, nigger! Jackass motherfucking shield is motherfucking nigger and they're escalating this shit They just had me fucking scream on the phone because they were telling me that I was a bitch and now I'm a liar Fuck you guys bitches mother <sighs> Aaliyah at shield just fucking <sighs> Cussed me out and called me names and literally just party on the phone letting me just scream at her He's a bitch nigger the fucking Shield Foundation just started like clapping at me and screaming at me on the phone, calling me a bitch ass other fucking liar, and I just broke a window in public because of this shit. This episode, we saw Daniel go through two housing arcs, which both ended in meltdowns. We are starting to see a pattern here with Daniel unable to keep housing due to severe altercations with caregivers. We have been introduced to a new manager, Oxus. It has been a crazy roller coaster ride, but it only gets more insane. Stay tuned for episode 4, which is the start of the travel arc. It's one of the most interesting periods in Larsonian history, and y'all aren't gonna want to miss it. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more Daniel Larson content and other cool stuff. I also want to thank whoever's here at the end for watching my video. I put a lot of hard work into this series, and the support is appreciated. With that, please feel free to comment your thoughts on my video and have a wonderful day or night. Peace, y'all!